So you want to stitch the glowing circuit with conductive thread, huh? That's great! Today I'm going to show you how to stitch up the perfect NeoPixel circuit using your Flora or Gemma microcontroller. Let's get started. These sewable NeoPixels have the same addressable RGB LEDs as NeoPixel strips and rings, but the circuit boards have large pads designed for stitching with conductive thread. For just a few pixels, two-ply stainless steel thread works great and is a bit easier to wrangle than the thicker three-ply, which I'd use for any circuit with more than five pixels. If your project has more than 20 pixels in it, you should upgrade to silicone-coated stranded wire. Choose a needle that fits through the hole, but whose eye is still large enough for the conductive thread. Another important tool is an embroidery hoop. This will keep your fabric taut so it's easier to work with, resulting in a cleaner finished project. If you're working on a heavy fabric like a winter coat, you could get away without one. I always stitch the center data lines first, then follow up with the power and ground buses. Before you start stitching, mark where your components will go with tailor's chalk, a disappearing marking pen, or sewing pins. Decide which side of your fabric you want your knots to be on and pierce through the fabric with your needle and pull it almost all the way through, leaving about a three inch tail for hand tying later. Stitch around the data pad on your Flora or Gemma a few times, then continue over to the input of your first pixel. Make short stitches by bringing the needle up and down through the fabric at close intervals. This is called a running stitch and is the most common stitch you'll use for hand sewing with conductive thread. Patience is key here. Big stitches can be very problematic later on. Stitch around this pad several times, very tightly, and even tie a knot here before stitching back towards the origin to tie the ends together. Over time, the springy steel may loosen and cause intermittent connection problems. Stitch back to the tail you started with and tie the ends together in a square knot. It won't stay tied, however, unless you glue it. I use clear nail polish for this since it's easy to apply, dries quickly and clear, and holds firm over time. I haven't found another glue that shares all of these properties yet, but I have seen super glue, hot glue, and fray check all fail in one or more major categories. As it's drying, keep tugging on the thread tails to keep the knot tight. And when it looks like nothing's moving anymore, you can sew another data line from the output of this pixel to the input of the next. But don't trim your thread tails yet. After the data connections are done, it's time to stitch power and ground each of which are done using one long strand to connect up all the positives to V out and all the negatives to ground. Tie your thread tails into knots nearby but not directly on the circuit boards so that no adhesive gets in the way of the electrons flowing from the board to the thread. Now it's time to test the circuit. Trim your thread tails and clean up your workspace so there aren't any stray bits of thread hanging around. Plug in your microcontroller over USB and then load the NeoPixel sample sketch using the Arduino software and watch your fabric circuit light up. Refer back to this technique when you're making projects like the motion-activated sparkle skirt, Pac-Man pixel suspenders, Cortana costume, or any of our other conductive thread wearables projects you can find on the Adafruit learning system. Thanks so much for watching, and if you have questions, post them up in the comments and I'll tackle them every week on our live wearables show. Don't forget to subscribe to Adafruit on YouTube.